I'm going to show you how to model this specimen pail. I'll be using this as a prop in my horror movie scene for Blender Challenge 21. You can download the reference image that I provided and model along with me if you like. So here in Blender, I'm in front view and I'm going to press Shift A, Image Reference, and I'm going to load that in. I'm going to press S2 to scale it up a little bit and G and I'm going to pull this so that the 3D cursor is pretty much at the bottom center and we have to adjust that a bit. I'm going to press 3 to look from the side and I'm going to pull it back a ways. Press 1 to look from the front again. All right, so here we go. We are ready to model. This is called the empty. Of course, you can turn it on and off if you need to. So I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh Cylinder. And I'm going to use, I think, 18 vertices. And as you can see, my diagram is a little bit off. And so I'm going to center it just a little bit better. We may have to do that a couple of times. I'm going to go into edit mode of my cylinder and scale it up a bit. And press Z for wireframe. And pull it up so the bottom of the cylinder is at the bottom of the image. Just like that. Okay. Deselect by pressing Alt-A. Press 2 for edge selection. Shift-Alt and click here and to get the entire ring right there and I'm going to pull it up to near the top. So it doesn't have to be on the diagram perfectly. It doesn't matter. You're just making a pail of some sort. All right, it's just there to help. All right, I'm going to press 1 for vertex selection. It just helps me see what I'm doing a little bit better. I'm going to press E and S and pull it out till I get the width that I want. E to extrude, extrude and pull up like this. E, pull up to there. S to scale, pull it in. E to extrude and we're just going to pull up to near the top past these holes. Now underneath there would be other um, sort of uh, pieces of this bottom pail but we, we don't need to do that. All right I went back into object mode Z for solid view. All right so this is what we have. Press 3 for face selection. Select it and get rid of it. Okay the bottom. This is a view from the bottom. All right, so we're going to do something like that. So very simply, just press I to inset. Pull in as much as you decide you want to. Press E to extrude and just gesture up in the Z direction like that. I to extrude to make a small circle in the middle like this. And just press E to extrude, pull it up, and I'm going to press S to scale. It doesn't have to go up too, too far, really. Just something like that is fine. Now I'll be putting a subdivision on this, so I'm going to want more edge loops. So in number two, edge selection, I'm going to shift alt and click here and here for these sharp edges. And I'm going to press control one, and, uh, uh, control B, sorry, and I'm going to pull and, pr and slide my mouse up one, roll your mouse up one to get just one other segment in there. So I have a total of three there for this bevel. All right. Uh, I'll go ahead and do a subdivision surface so you can see how things will affect it. I'm going to go control one, shade smooth. I'll come back to the bottom and I'm going to slide an edge loop down to here. I'm going to slide one out and then go back and have a look. I may come back in here now and press three for face selection and select this face. It's hard to tell it's selected so I'll turn that off and then just press I to inset and pull in a little bit and then turn that back on and we should have like sort of a gentle a gentle curve in there all right let's come up here now and press 2 for edge selection shift alt and click this lower edge and I'm going to control B and pull I still have the same number of segments in the bevel all right I, so that's fine and then control R for to add an edge loop pull it up just not all the way and another one about an equal distance and we'll put one more in here and we're going to need another edge loop here to support that let's have a look at it okay so that's what that's what we're coming up with for the bottom and unless i need to put in another edge loop that's probably just fine right there save our work let's press one and look from the front um yeah we're going to do the top now so i'm just going to hide that and i'll show you how to make the next part so the 3d cursor is right down there that's that's fine or we can bring that back 
might be a little easier for us if we shift alt and click there shift s cursor to select it bring the 3d cursor to the top middle and then hide that so now it's up there all right so we're going to do this top lid part um, there's different ways to do this this is one way that i like to do it shift a mesh plane go into edit mode rotate x 90 and start scaling it until this bottom edge is at the bottom edge of the diagram and then press two for edge selection select the top and pull it down to there perfect let's go into wireframe Control r to put one edge loop there now it's not exactly in the middle of the diagram doesn't even really matter Control b now and pull but roll back to zero so there's no segments in between and get yourself a space like that not too big all right now this lip juts out and so the way we're going to do that is like this Control r pull it down to about the bottom of the white line there and then Control r again and another one to the top of the white area that's going to enable us to do this let's select that press one to zoom in that's going to allow us i'll go back in solid view so you can see that to press three for face selection select these three bottom faces turn a little bit and push it out all right so we'll get this angle not to push it out too far do something like that go back into front view and wireframe and now control r bring an edge loop to the bottom of your space bring another edge loop to the top of your space all right and then press three for face selection select that face and then press i to inset and pull it in and then delete that face all right now come over here and go control r roll your mouse up once so you have two yellow lines do the same on this side two yellow lines and now go back into solid view and that piece is ready all right so back into object mode let's add an array it's going to be in the x as it already is click on merge and for the count put eight so it's like this collapse that come to the modifiers again and do simple deform switch this to bend the z-axis and change this to 360 now it wraps all the way around all right now we are very likely going to have a seam in here let's go ahead and apply both of these shade smooth and look see there's a bit of a seam in there so now Go into edit mode, deselect everything. Z for what? Try to remember which one it is. Z for wireframe. It's this one. Box select all of that. Those aren't merged there. Now you can try merge by distance. And that may have done it right there. That did do it. So I'm happy about that. All right, let's go Alt H and bring everything back. Now it's not centered, but the 3D cursor still is. So let's take this and set the origin to the 3D cursor and then set the geometry to origin now it's centered but it's not the right size so press one go into edit mode and select it and let's scale it but not in the z all right and let's also go into wireframe because we're going to move it down so let's just go ahead and do that move it down to there scale shift z and pull and expand it like that done let's go into solid view and have a look at our work okay now what we need to do is an edge selection shift alt and click this edge e and s and pull it in a little bit and then slide an edge loop up here slide an edge loop down there so it looks like this we can take this if we want or we can scale shift z make it a bit smaller just to match our model a little bit better take this top edge shift alt and click there e and s pull it in until it's past this line here uh, something like that e to extrude pull down a little ways we're making the top part there s to scale it in e and s come in and then at some point go e come down a little ways s to scale and f to make a face now i have to do some work on that okay so the way we're going to do this is shift alt to click this top one I want this edge to be really nice and rounded 
but then the other edge right here a little bit sharper. So I'm going to do quite a big bevel control B pull. Just going to do that and I'm going to roll my mouse up once I think. Let's check that out. Still looking okay. Then I'm going to take this one, control B, but I'm going to do a smaller bevel like that with the three segments in total. All right. Now we're going to come in here, bring an edge loop out. I'm going to bring an edge loop in. Let's have a look at that. I don't want it too sharp. Okay. Let's come in here and maybe we will put one more edge loop down here. Just to do that. Up to you if you want to. Now I can turn on the cavity shader and it'll look a little bit a little bit nicer. That might even be a little bit too deep for my liking. So I think I'll in face selection select that. Control plus to grow my selection and I might just pull it up and have a look. Alright, that's that's probably okay. Let's see if I throw one more edge loop. I think I like that. All right, now it's a question of deciding if we want to give this some thickness. And we can try with Solidify. I'll just do something like that. And maybe I'm going to try 0 0.2, see if I like that, see if it changes anything. And I think it's looking okay to me. Let's make sure all our faces are facing the right way. They're blue and they are, so that's good good so that's okay so far as well so let's move on and do the handle all right i'm going to do these little parts here that the handle will connect to these part this would be plastic and plastic and plastic and this would be metal and then of course there's a piece of plastic up here okay so let's look from the side and go into the main body and in three face selection select that face that's central right there's three quads there three and then the little one and the little one so that's that's the side right there the middle shift s cursor to select it bring the 3d cursor there all right shift a now mesh cylinder i can use the same values of 18 so let's scale it down let's rotate y90 and let's pull it out for a moment and we'll delete this back face we'll pull it back in and we'll have a look from one and you can see that we're off the diagram a little bit. I'll go into wireframe and it's no big deal. We can scale shift X though to make it bigger but not stick out. I can pull it up a little bit if I want. So it's a little closer to the diagram. I can even if I want grab this and pull it out. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to be seen anyhow. But we're going to have that. Now we're going to bevel this face. So I'm going to select that face. I hit three and then face for face selection and then control B and pull and I'm going to roll up a few times and then I'm going to shade smooth. I'm not going to put a subdivision on that or anything. I'm just going to look at that and I think that looks a little bit big. I'm just going to scale it down a bit more and I am actually going to pull it down. All right. So again, off the diagram a bit, but that's okay. I might even pull it in a little ways and then we'll decide if I need to pull it up. So I want to mirror it on the other side, but my 3D cursor is there and it needs to be sort of central. So I'm just going to come back in here and shift S cursor to select it. Probably could use the eyedropper more though. I'll set the origin to the 3D cursor and click on mirror. I'm in the X and there are my little parts that are sticking out. Okay, cool. All right, now to make the actual metal handle, shift A, mesh plane, go into edit mode, one for vertex selection and M merge at center. So it's selected, I'm going to G to grab and pull it up to here and I can reposition this later so I'm just going to push it right to about there all right you can see the little dot the vertex now I'm going to press E and pull it out in the X E come up to about here we're going to be beveling this E and G to grab I'm going to pull it up to about there all right so this is what I'm getting so far I'm just sort of following the profile but not exactly I'm going to press E and come up and it's easier if it's tilted a little bit and not 90 degrees but that's okay e i'm going to push in before i go any further i'm going to add a mirror to this all right so you can see it on both sides i'm going to come back in and i'm going to select that maybe if i'm in wireframe you can see it better maybe not i'm going to turn on clipping and i'm going to push this until they meet 
and then it'll stop right there and I'll have that let's hide that and so this is what we have it's very boxy right now but we're gonna work on that all right before I apply the mirror I'm gonna go back into edit mode deselect that point I'm gonna select this point first actually I think I will look at the empty not that it matters that much I'm gonna bevel this more than these ones so I'm gonna go shift control B because it's a single vertex you have to do shift control B I'm gonna pull and I'm gonna roll my mouse till I have say five points I'm just gonna get a nice curve like that one two three four five all right deselect come down here zoom in shift control B and pull but now yeah I could probably still use the five points I just don't want points overlapping. You, you can go down to three if you want. I might do that, three. So I have one, two, one, two. Oh, maybe I did four. Yeah. Okay. Again, that shift control B and try this again. There, now it's smoother. Let's, let's have a look at that. Okay. Select that one, shift control B, pull, and do something like this. That may be too many points. But let's go with that so now you have this okay apply the mirror leave this point we'll use that convert to curve and in the curve dialog box under geometry start turning up the bevel depth if you want you can look at the empty and see how thick to make it or you can do it whatever thickness you want i'll go for around there let's go back in the solid view and look at that okay now if you're happy with that you can come up scroll up to the top under resolution change that to about four so when we convert this to a mesh there's not too many polys so let's do that now convert to mesh we can come in and you can see all your vertices or whatever and now I'm going to shift alt and click that edge. I switch to edge selection. Look from the front. We can turn this back on if we want. And I'm going to control B, roll back to zero. So there's only two edges on the outside. Pull to about the width of that. All right. And then E, alt S and push until you get the size that you want. Like that. All right. Now in edge selection, shift alt and click that edge. Shift Alt and click this edge, Control B to bevel, pull, and I'm going to have just a couple of segments in there. And I'll be adding a subdivision to this, so I'm going to try Control 1, Shade Smooth, and now bring an edge loop in here to push that in a bit, and an edge loop in here to push that in a bit. Now I've built this piece as part of this. If you want to do separate materials, it's still easy to apply a material to this and then just select the faces of this. Uh, or you can separate this out. It's up to you. Double check that everything is facing outwards. All right. Turn off the empty and maybe go to here so you can see some shadows. And actually, you can even turn on shadows. Save. And there is our simple specimen uh, bucket or pail. Um, I probably won't have the handle sticking up like this and so what I might do is come over here and apply that mirror for that and go in to edit mode and shift S shift S cursor to select it that'll bring the 3d cursor right in the middle of these and then you can select the handle it's all one piece switch over to 3d cursor as your pivot I'm gonna look from the side and just press R to rotate and bring it down so that it just about makes contact something like that if you prefer that orientation for your handle and there is your can and if you want you can a to select everything m new collection call it pale or something or pale one and you have that as a collection instance go shift c to bring the 3d cursor right back to the bottom and then shift a collection instance pale you bring in another one without increasing your polys and now you can um, get out of 3d view go back to medium point with a pivot rotating the Z and you can 
I turn this a bit, you can then Shift D and duplicate another one, and you can rotate in the X. All right, and just put that wherever you want. And then you can have a cool little scene uh, where you see a bunch of these things in different orientations. And, uh, and that's that. All right, so there's your specimen uh, specimen pale. I will be texturing this at another point and bringing that into my scene and I will show you what it looks like down the road. Thanks for watching.